2025 Pinarello Dogma and looks to blue. All right, so this is the first look at the new 2025 Pinarello Dogma F. And all right, I gotta be real. First time I looked at this color, I'm like, this is so 2014. Why are we like having a purple oil slick paint job? But then I looked at it in the sun as a sun or even like a little bit of light reflects on it and you just see how blue it is and it grew on me in like I'd say like within two minutes it grew on me I was like wow that is such a beautiful color and it's very Italian yeah yeah it is Italian wait, wait, yeah yeah it's very Italian um, I think the frame was actually made in Italy um, they say made in Italy on the top end models but uh, I know sometimes that means painted in Italy or assembled in Italy, but let me know in the comments below if you know, because I actually, I'm not 100% sure. I think Colnagos are made in Italy, but um, hey, if they're made in Taiwan, they have the best technology, let the best people make it. Um, but let me know about that. I'm actually curious to know. But the thing about this bike that I'd say I find the most fascinating is the trail is a little bit longer, meaning that the bike is actually less, I don't know if I want to say less responsive, but it's less twitchy. Um, you know, with the shorter trail, you have the ability to steer out of, um, you know, a pothole or something really fast. But Pinarello's idea with making the trail longer was, you know, especially for Team Sky or Team Ineos, but I don't know, I just remember them as Team Sky with Chris Froome. But when they're going really fast in a race, um, and you really have a lot of speed downhill. Like I remember when Chris Froome in the Tour de France, in 2016 Tour de France, he was going really, really fast down that descent. The bike actually feels more stable. So I think that in some cases, that's actually a good thing. But Pinarello, they have had this shape going for a long time. They have the upper end, they have the fork shape. And that was one of my favorite things about the 2022 or 2021 Dogma F was when you look at it head on, especially with the rim brake model, I love how the fork kind of bows out, which is really pretty to see, especially when I'm going up a hill. But they still kept that really nice side profile and they still have a lot of tire clearance. You have up to 32 millimeters tire clearance, which is really good because I think people are, you know, starting to realize that people really ride these bikes in the real world. A lot of people don't hang these bikes on the wall and use them as kind of a display piece, which they're great for, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, I mean, 32s, like, if you live in a rough area, you know, I live in New England, the roads are very rough. Uh, on a 32, I mean, you're going to be way happier than you'll be on, like, say, a 23 or something like that. And some people think that that's overkill, but honestly, try it. I think that you'll like it better than you think um, on a 32, like a wider tire. One thing about this bike that is controversial, and I know designers, engineers, and mechanics, they all hate each other so much because the Pinarello, they had something going on with their cockpit on the last generation, which was really, really cool. There's this hatch, there's like this door that helps you route the hoses or um, brake cables, because um, last one you have a rim brake option as well so much easier but on this one they don't so this one's disc only which eh, boo i don't know I, mean, I know a lot of people are using disc but i always like to see a rim brake option because i mean at this price point i mean you really know what you want you know i may want a direct mount rim brake option which can fit 30 mil tires a lot of the times has all the clearance you'd ever want but hey another video but what i like the pinarello did do is they're still going to give you the dogma f rim brake frame so if you want to do a custom build you can buy that they said they're going to make that for many years to come um at least that's what gcn said which i think was really good so i, I love to see that it's not like hey we're leaving you out it's like hey if you want this you can have it which is really good i mean especially at this price point you know so this i mean it's a 2025 Pinarol dogma f dura di2 model um in a size 55 so really gorgeous um, but if you look really closely it's a little bit of a fingerprint magnet which i mean a lot of great colors are so i mean i guess i can't fault them too much on that 
but my god it's so pretty and this thing's just gonna sound so amazingly good whooshing by you and Princeton Carbon Works wheels and everything it's just oh my god it's just such a piece of art um, I think in this color it really does it for me because I remember the last generation I really loved that plutonium colored fork that was really nice but I think a lot of realized this like you know this this bike, Pinarello, what they, they're kind of like Lamborghini in the sense where they make a very, very striking design where either you love it or you hate it. It's very loud. You look at it, you're like, wow, like that's some kind of statement. And I think having it in a color like this really helps represent that a lot. Like the other color, that gray plutonium, it's very cool, but that's like more of like Porsche, you're thinking more understated. Um, very fast, very very exotic looking too, but it's more understated. I really like how in this this color it really shows off a lot of the beauty and the uniqueness of this frame and of this bike overall. And it really draws my attention and it makes me almost kind of forget about that, you know, fifteen thousand five hundred dollar US dollar price tag. <laughs> Which that's a lot of money. Especially like um if you live in one of these states that has sales tax, oh my gosh, you have to pay like an extra $1,000 US um, in sales tax, and I don't know about other countries, I'm just talking about the United States, I live in the United States, but wow, that is, that is a lot of money, but you know what, I mean, if you ride a lot, and you're going to take care of the bike, and you're going to make sure that it's maintained properly, and you just ride the hell out of it, and you keep it for many many years because hey the next Pinarello is probably going to look very similar to this because they've kind of got this whole fork design and everything nailed down that people like and you know what I've talked to people that ride Pinarello is they say that it the sizes really feel true to the rider like the size whatever size you get and the reason the size are a little bit odd is because they're really going to fit you the best and I know Specialized they do the rider first engineered um, approach you have some brands like Trek where the sizes may run a little bit smaller than some other brands like a size 54 and a half or a size 55 Pinarello is really going to fit you um, true to size especially if you get a good bike fit done so that's awesome and then the amount of cockpit um, options that come in a lot of people complain because they're like oh no this cockpit you know it may work for me it may not but they have a lot of different sizes so I would imagine whatever size you are, whatever your bike fit is, whatever stem length and bar width you would need, um, they're going to have it for you. And they also, they flare out the bars a little bit at the end to kind of keep that narrower profile to get that aerodynamic advantage. And speaking of that, um, you see the, um, for the through axles, it's a disc brake model. You have um, it covered a little bit with a nice P there. So it looks very nice, it looks very clean. Um, it just, like, when you see it in person, go see it in person. Go to a bike shop, go to a friend that has one, rich enough to buy one. Or, I mean, hey, they just want to save money on gas and ride around the coolest bike ever. Nothing wrong with that either. That, I mean, once you see it, like, it'll be like, phew. Like, it looks a lot like the last Pinarello, I'm not going to lie. But... Hey, I mean, I think it's absolutely gorgeous, and the Dogma X is very nice too, but hey, I mean, you can fit such a wide tire on here that, I mean, you could honestly probably ride this like a Pinarello Dogma X too, and you could completely be fine with that, completely get away with that. But it's, man, it's a stellar bike. I, like, the more I look at the paint job, it sounds bad, and it sounds like, you know, I'm being had by the bike industry saying this but the idea of that price just like I forget about it more the more I look at the bike and look how pretty it is and the craftsmanship that went into it um, I would like to know if it's actually made in Italy though I mean because I get it I mean a lot of people say oh that's like a pretentious thing no if an Italian craftsman made that and was paid a living wage I personally think that's worth something and I think that's something worth supporting and I know the best people in Taiwan can make it, but you know, I like supporting the bikes actually being made by people being paid a living wage when we're passionate. I think that is worth money. It's not a whole pretentious thing about, oh, my bike's better because it wasn't made in China or Taiwan. 
like that's why I think that's valuable. So let me know what you think. Gorgeous bike, gorgeous paint job. I'm very excited. It was amazing to get my hands on it. And um, I hope you all have an awesome day. Stay vegan.